Hey everybody, my name is Amy Lee Hope. I am back for vlog number six. It took me, I don't know, I think like two and a half to three weeks to start this one after my last one, which I was kind of hot on myself. Um, I just couldn't get myself into the right zone, I guess, or I couldn't think of a topic, and I wanted to do one on pain medication, which I will do, but through all of this, I realized that there's a more important issue right now for myself, I guess, that I think is worth talking about, and it is not specifically geared towards people with chronic illness, but it does affect people with chronic illness to a very high percentage. Most people with chronic illness deal with mental health issues, which is the topic. Um, I found myself, um, I had eye surgery on this eye. I had an Ahmed, I believe it's called, implant put in to help to drain the fluid pressure from my eye. It's really gross. I watched the surgery. It's kind of fascinating. Um, it's right above, I hate, I, I can feel it and I don't like that, but it's like all my replacements, my joint replacements, they tell you they'll feel like yours in a certain time and they never do. This, I was told, would feel like an eyelash in my eye, and that's not true. It feels like a big ball or a rock on the top of my eye, and it sucks. But anyway, it's working, so that's the point, and that's great. But it sits like it's in my eyeball, tucked in my eyeball on the top right here, and where your eye is, is your socket, I can feel it like to the top of my eyebrow right here. And it's pretty big. Um, when I watched the surgery, I couldn't believe how big that thing was. But anyway, it's doing its job. So within these last few weeks that I haven't recorded a vlog, um, I had the surgery and I needed to heal. And throughout the healing process, I am literally probably, I'd say about 97% blind. I've been this way since the surgery. Um, it's because I am on eye drops for glaucoma and eventually it will stop those eye drops in my right eye, my good eye, so that I can get my vision completely back in that eye. Um, so that's good and we're gonna keep up with my care so that this eye doesn't also go blind because I need my vision. So we're on top of that. Throughout this process, I was already dealing with wounds, open wounds that are on my legs um, from having lymphedema, which is swelling. Your legs swell very bad um, and they easily get wounded. I could rub against, I mean, I bumped my leg on my desk lightly bumped it and like it popped like a balloon it was disgusting blood just gushed everywhere and the thing is it hasn't none of them have healed in about seven months now I have a nurse that comes and cares for them I have um, several other issues that I am dealing with and I try my best. I try to be that strong person that everyone keeps telling me that I am. And I think that it just got the best of me. I think that I just tried so hard to be that strong person that everybody sees me to be for some reason. And I, um... I wasn't feeling so strong. I felt weak. And I 
will have been in an unbelievable amount of pain with the season change, had a flare-up with my arthritis that I've had for what feels like forever already. Um, it's just, you know, 41 years with this is so much adds up and it's a domino effect so when one thing flares up it just all goes and I haven't felt like that in years because I was on pain medication and I guess it helped more than I thought it did um so I just became very sad and sad to a point that I, I, I guess I just felt suffocated by it all and I want to say that I found through talking to certain people there were some that completely understood the mental health aspect of sadness, depression, anxiety, all of it to a whole nother group of people who judge it or don't understand it or think that because you have anxiety, you're broken, you know? It's, it's so strange to me because I'm, I'm so familiar with mental illness. I, um, I've suffered from depression, bipolar, um, I suffered from severe anxiety since I was young. I started counseling, I think at about four years old. I remember they used to come to my school, but that is what they do when you have a chronic illness. It's always something that creeps up on you because you go through so many types of issues you know, obviously you're going to get sad and sometimes the sadness turns into a depression and you have constant anxiety and worries all the time, which is normal. And that's what I want to get to with this. There is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of with your mental health. Nothing. There is a huge problem with people who don't educate themselves on mental illness when they have a loved one um, or someone that's affected by any kind of mental illness. They don't educate themselves. So let's say I was to slip, you know, depression can sneak right up on you. So let's say I sneak up, a depression sneaks up on me and I start to slowly get all the symptoms of a complete depression and my husband Chris doesn't know anything about it. He's just going to wonder what's wrong with me. He's not going to know to ask me questions or to reach out for help um, because depression can become quite serious. You know, it can lead to suicidal thoughts. Um, I've, I've been through some serious ones and it's not a joke. It's not a joke. And we need to reach out and learn to ask for help. I am terrible at that and I need to start getting better with it. I recently did, um, this past week, I reached out to a friend and told her that I was just sad. I just, I, I knew it wasn't depression. I'm not, you know, I, I laugh still. I still talk to my friends. I, I, I'm not depressed and I know that, but I do have very bad anxiety right now and have been very sad at all of the things that I'm going through, everything's just piling on so quick and there's so much and people don't understand it. They don't understand how, you know, somebody can have so much wrong with one body. 
So I reached out to this friend, and I've known her since I was, Jesus, maybe like 10, 11, I don't, I don't know. And to hear the words that she used to describe me was unbelievable to me because I was like, how can people see me this way and I don't see myself anywhere near what these people say. I mean, she told me that I was admirable. I, it made me cry. Um, but she was so uplifting and supportive and it helped me so much just to reach out to somebody. Um, unfortunately with all of this pandemic stuff, we can't really have people around and if you're autoimmune like myself you are very limited to who you can be around um so you you feel more lonely than you normally even would already and it it just got to a point man where i just felt the loneliest I'd felt in a long, long time. A very deep, deep emptiness inside me. And I didn't like that because that's not me. I am outgoing, you know, I mean, I'm talking like not going out because obviously I'm not mobile really anymore, but I am outgoing personality. I love to talk to anybody. I'm a friendly person. I love I love shooting the shit and having fun. I love it. So, I just didn't like what was happening to me. And I think that people need to realize that that's okay. And because you have to take a Xanax because you have anxiety is okay. That is a medication that you are given for that reason. Um, it is okay. It, 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 if anybody's going to judge you because you take medication for your mental illness, then they are not someone that really either understands or doesn't need to be in your life. Um, I've taken time to educate certain people in my life, and whether they understand or not remains to be seen, but... It is what it is, and I don't personally know how you can have someone in your family be mentally ill and not educate yourself. I mean, I know I've seen mentally ill people to a, a pretty decent degree, and the families have no clue how to deal with it. They don't even know what it's about. And I think that that's sad. I mean, I can't imagine being in a family where I have a legit mental illness. I'm talking if you're bipolar, schizophrenic, uh, who, the, who the hell knows, okay? Any of it. And your family's got no clue. I don't understand why a family wouldn't want to help that person um, instead of playing like the ignorance card and by ignorance I mean just not having the education and what it's about. There is nothing to be ashamed of. I'm going to tell you right now, I had been diagnosed bipolar but I was on some heavy pain medication most of my life. And as I got off the pain medication, it was close to the end of when I got off, um, my mind became so much more clear. I was like a whole different person. And that, I guess, from my doctors, you know, and realizing things were changing and evaluating me, had taken away that diagnosis, which to me was great. I loved that fact because I didn't feel that way anymore. I felt completely clear-headed and different. I knew that I still had anxiety. 
I knew I was still susceptible to depression, but I wasn't bipolar anymore, and that was such a relief when I started to become clear-headed, because let me tell you, the whole bipolar thing, man, is it serious. It is so serious. Um, I know that I felt so alone for so many of those years, um, but that is not something I can control in other people. All I can do is tell you that there is nothing to be ashamed of. It is not bad. It does not make you a bad person. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything. It makes you different. It makes you special. It makes you, you know, your personality different. It, yes, you have to be accountable for your wrong actions. And you, you know, might need to be called out sometimes on your behaviors. But that's not a bad thing. People are just trying to help you in that case. Um... I became comfortable with who I am a long time ago. It's taken me years to say that. But it's been a few years now that I am okay with me. I tell people I've got a colorful personality, which I do. I say what I want. I am not rude. I don't mean it to be. I'm honest. I am a trustworthy person. I'm a good person. It doesn't matter what anxiety attack I'm having and when and why or, you know, if I'm taking medication for it. None of that matters. It actually helps to define who I am. Those moments tell me that I have anxiety enough that shows to me that I care enough that I'm worried for whatever the situation is. That to me means that I care enough. And it's okay. It's okay. And I hope that you guys um, can become a little bit more comfortable in your skin and can be a little bit more comfortable with who you are and what is different about you that is maybe, you know, something that is seen to be something that's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. We have to take care of our mental health just as much as our physical health, if not more. If we're suffering from our mental health, then our physical health will definitely suffer also. That's a given. So I'm going to leave this at that. I'm going to say take care of yourself. Take care of your overall well-being. Um, if you have to and you feel sad to a point that you think you could possibly become depressed, reach out to your doctor and get on medication just for preventative reasons. I've done that. I've beaten it to the punch because I don't want to get into a depression. But I am lucky enough that I've learned that throughout my life. So I want to say that, um, sorry, I'm leaking everywhere. This whole half of my face because of my eye is just leaking. So I hope that you maybe got something out of this vlog. I hope that you realize how amazing and beautiful you are. And by different, I mean beautifully different. And perfectly perfect. That's what we're supposed to be. As human beings, we are meant to be different. And be okay with who you are, no matter what. I... I am proud of myself right now for just getting this video out there. It was a lot for me because it's such a sensitive topic. Um, 
I wasn't really sure how to go about it, but I am glad that I did. I hope you guys all have an amazing day and a beautiful week. And I'm going to say peace. And keep on keeping on, guys, because that's all you can do.